but this is the chip we need to replace. A while back, I made a video about five broken Nintendo Switches that I bought off eBay. So I'm gonna update you guys on how well I did on that lot. And then I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit how I diagnosed and repaired most of the switches in that lot. So first, let me give you an update on how that repair process has gone. I was able to fix three of the five consoles. One console had severe liquid damage, so I was not able to fix that. I figure I can probably sell that one on eBay for about 50 bucks still. The other one that I couldn't fix was one that just doesn't turn on. It's got a good battery, it charges, but for some reason the display doesn't work even when I plug in a known good screen. So that one I should still be able to make some money on as well. But for some reason I just haven't figured out how to fix it. I bought that lot of five broken switches for a total of $570 and my total sales are going to be approximately $760. So I made a little bit of money, not as much as I would have hoped, but at least I didn't lose money on the lot. Now let's talk about how I diagnosed and repaired them. So the key to figuring out what's wrong with these Nintendo Switch consoles that don't turn on is one of these guys. I featured this in another video, but I want to show it again because without this, it's going to be virtually impossible to really narrow down what's going on with it. Now, this is something you plug into a charger and then you plug your charge cable from here to the Switch. And this is going to tell you how many amps the Switch is charging at or if it's even charging at all. So the key to this is knowing what's normal. So if you plug this into a broken Nintendo Switch and it charges at about 0.1 or 0.01 amps, that's virtually nothing. And that means that most likely your charge chip is faulty. Now the charge chip is a small chip on the motherboard that controls how the battery is charged on the switch. And I'll be showing you how to replace that in just a little bit. If you plug your switch into this and it's showing it's charging at 0.46, that's actually a normal charging amount for a battery that's depleted. If you plug it in and it's charging at 0.46, you can either just let it charge for a long period of time. Sometimes it takes hours. Sometimes I just leave them overnight. And in the morning, most of them will be fully charged if you see that 0.46. Now there is one caveat to that, and that is there are some that for some reason they charge at 0.46 but they never fully charge. And even with a known good battery, when I plug that in, it still doesn't work. And so those are the ones that I don't know how to fix yet. If you have any ideas what might cause that problem, leave your ideas in the comments below and maybe we can explore that in another video. Now, if your switch is charging at 0.46, but you don't wanna wait hours to see if it's gonna fully charge and actually turn on, you can just take a known good battery and plug it into the switch and then press the power button and that will tell you if it's gonna work or not. If the switch is working fine, it will power up like normal with that known good battery. You don't have to replace it, just disconnect the old battery, connect the new one on, and then press the power button to see if it powers up. That's how you can figure out if it's going to work when it's fully charged or whether it's going to have the problem that I haven't figured out how to fix yet. When you see them charging at 0.46, it will take some amount of time before it starts fast charging, which fast charging is normally about 1.4 amps or so. So that's what normally happens if the battery is depleted, it will charge at 0.46. Then once it gets up to a certain charge, it will jump up to 1.4 and then it will fast charge to fully charge the battery. So that's how I diagnosed these Nintendo switches to see exactly what the problem is and what needed to be done. Now I'm going to take you up to my workbench. I'm going to get you zoomed in on a motherboard and I'm going to show you how to replace the charge chip and also how to replace the battery if that's needed. So here is the charge chip on the motherboard. We've got the charge port up here. We have the battery connector right here. You see I've disconnected the battery. It's probably not necessary, but I always do it just in case. I don't want to cause any problems, but this is the chip we need to replace. So what we're going to do is tape off all of this stuff so we can get to the hot air in here without melting any of the plastic. So I'm going to get that taped off and then we'll get our hot air soldering station up and running and then I'll show you how to replace that chip. And now we have the entire area taped off. It's very important to make sure and tape all of this off because if you're using hot air like me, then the hot air is going to go through here and it's going to melt the plastic over on this other side. So got to make sure it's all the way taped off. So now I'm going to put some flux around the chip and then I'm going to get my hot air started up and then we'll get it replaced.
now that we have this new chip on, I'm going to put it under the micro microscope to see how the pads line up. I can see it's a little bit crooked, so we are going to need to heat that up again and make sure and get it on there straight and then we'll be good to go. Now you can see that the chip definitely is crooked on here. It looks like we might have some bridge solder there. So we're going to heat this up and we're going to get that chip on there correctly and we'll call it good. Waiting for the solder to get shiny. There we got some getting shiny right there, which means it's nice and melted. And we'll just give that a little push over there. And there we go. You can see all the joints look nice. There's no bridge solder. Everything's on there straight. So we're now good to go. So this Nintendo Switch charges but does not turn on. Now I can plug a known good battery in here and you can see how it will turn on with a known good battery. This right here is a spare battery that I keep that I know for sure is good. So what I do, I just plug that right in there. I can flip it up so I can hold it better. And then press the power button and you guys can see it does power on with the known good battery. So what we need to do is replace this battery. Now batteries can be tricky and they're also explosive. So I do have to say, if you don't have much experience with this or if you don't know how to do it or if it's your first one, you may wanna consider letting someone who knows how to do it, do it. I'm gonna be using this tool. It's got a very sharp edge on it. I don't actually recommend doing this, especially if you don't have very much experience because if you pierce this battery with this tool, it will at a, at a minimum start on fire most likely and it could possibly start a pretty serious fast fire. What I'm gonna do is get in under the battery just like this and then just start lifting up. There's adhesive on this battery. So you gotta get the battery up off of the adhesive. And there we go. So this actually is not factory adhesive. So this battery has been replaced before Hopefully replacing the battery will fix it, but I don't know for sure as like I said, this is not factory adhesive. It is plenty sticky still. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the new battery in right here. I'm gonna put it in like this. I'm gonna press down. Make sure that it's not gonna come up easily. It's not too big of a deal, but we don't want it flopping around in here. It's nice and solid. Now let's plug this battery in. There we go. Now let's see if it turns on with this battery fully installed. And there we go. And you can see that it does fully turn on. Now something else I always do when I'm replacing these batteries is take this foam or move it off of the old battery and put it on the new one because you wanna make sure that battery is not flopping around. This foam is coming off pretty easily. A lot of times it doesn't. Sometimes you can't even get all of it off, but if you at least have some foam around some of the edges, then that will do the job of keeping the battery in there without making it flop around or anything like that. So we'll install the foam. It's not super important, the, the placement. You want it just uh, on the outside of the battery, just about like that, and we'll call this battery replaced. I hope this video gives you guys some ideas about how to fix your Nintendo Switch or if you're buying them to fix and resell. Hopefully this video helps. I have a link to all of the parts and tools that I use in the description below. It'll take you right to my Amazon store. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comments section and I hope you guys have a great day.